What's up, everybody? It's Adam, a.k.a. Cali Coaster, a.k.a. PunkVid619, a.k.a. PunkVid Music on the YouTubes. Now, today's video is going to be a little different than some of the other videos I've posted in the past. You'll notice that the area that I'm recording in is a little bit more well lit, and I've got no special effects or anything going on other than my normal ambient lighting. And the reason is, this is not a fun topic to talk about. This is not something that I wanted to talk about. This is not something that I'm doing just because I'm bored or I'm looking for an interesting project to work on. This is something that I feel needs to be discussed that has not been talked about much in a current investigation regarding a roller coaster incident at Universal's Epic Universe last week in which a rider became deceased while riding the new Stardust Racers roller coaster at Epic Universe, a ride which was designed by Mock Rides and built over the last few years and opened to the public earlier this year with Epic Universe. Now, there's a lot of discussion going on at who's to blame, who's at fault, what really happened, how did it happen, and I have a lot of questions myself. And one thing that I wanted to kind of shed some light on was something that I discovered isn't really talked a whole lot about. And that's how was the writer writing? Not what condition was the writer in, but how were they writing? Because Mock Rides has been designing launched roller coasters that are similar to Stardust Racers with the exact same train style design and seating as seen on Stardust Racers since 2009 when they opened Blue Fire Mega Coaster. And I've actually ridden one of their launched coasters at SeaWorld San Diego. Manta has pretty much the exact same seating and restraint design as pretty much every other launched roller coaster that's non spinning that they have built, designed, and opened within. The last 16 17 years and one of the reasons that i know that the race street system has to be pretty much the same is because a lot of time money and resources are spent in designing restraint systems for rides so you if you have a design that already works that's been working for years on these types of rides why would you spend the time and money to design new ones when they've been proven time and time again to not have any major incidents well that is until wednesday of last week on september 17th unfortunately kevin zavala did not return from his ride in the same state in which he boarded which is something that parks manufacturers designers and anyone involved in those projects that's the last thing that they want to have happen they want to make sure that everybody arrives back to the station in the same physical and mental condition that they boarded in. And one thing that I wanted to discuss was the restraint system that's used on these rides. Now they don't use over the shoulder restraints like you would expect on most intense, especially inverting roller coasters. When I say inverting, I don't mean it inverted like B&M's and Bacomas where it hangs below the track. I just mean, it involves inversions and other sharp, sudden maneuvers that can do weird things to your body while riding if you're not properly restrained and positioned for the duration of your ride. Now, in answer to your question, why do I have this red bag on my lap? Well, this I'm using to simulate the actual lap bar restraint that's used on these types of rides. It's not the same exact shape and it's actually not quite as bulky as the ones that are used on the mock rides seating for their restraints. But it does show that the bulkiness of the restraint and the way in which the restraint is designed for you to be, to, for you to ride does provide the same type of safety that a over the shoulder restraint or shoulder harness would provide 
because if you're riding properly, you're pretty much going to have your forearms going across the top of the restraint and coming off of the front of the lap bar, which is actually even longer than this. At the top, there would be a little, almost a loop attached to it with a foam padding on the very top. And that is designed, that's where you're supposed to be holding on to. Now, I understand a lot of people, especially when they don't have over the shoulder restraints to limit the movement of their arms, like to put their hands up in the air. Me, especially, you know, that's one of my favorite ways to ride. However, we do need to understand that these rides are not designed for us to be riding like this. They are designed for us to be holding on to those restraints and securing our upper body in the method in which they created, which is why they have those grab bars on the front. Because if you're holding on like this, seated in this position, you have very limited upper body movement. And the seats are also designed with kind of a wraparound side on them to also limit your side to side movement, movement during lateral elements. This helps during the vertical forces, the side to side. Lateral forces are where the wrapping seats come into play. So as designed, this is probably as secure, if not maybe more secure the, than some of those shoulder restraints because you don't have that head banging that you would get on your traditional over the shoulder restraints. So it makes for a little bit more comfortable ride. At the same time, you'll notice there's a box down here probably. I don't know if you can see it, but this is also to simulate the fact that these seats are elevated in a way where this is kind of like a floorless coaster experience in which your feet are not touching the floor. Now, I, in order to create a little bit of realism with that and to show how your knees are raised a little bit in the seating position because on top of the seat being elevated, it's also a bucket style seat in which the seat itself slopes kind of downward from the front. And there's also, I don't have anything to simulate it, but in your thigh area, there's also a little hump like you would find on a lot of the inverted coasters that I alluded to earlier, like Bacoma and Bolagaram Abyard, where the seats hang below the track. And that's just an added part for safety to help keep your body from leaving the seat, from doing things that the designers did not intend for your body to do. Now, going back to the restraint and why this is secure, rocking back and sorry, that box was supposed to simulate the metal part of the front of the car that has been alluded to as the cause of the blunt force trauma. But what I'm trying to prove is that if you're properly seated in this position, holding on as designed, even vigorously rocking back and forth, you'll notice that. My upper body barely moves forward. Now, I do the same thing with my arms up. I obviously have a little bit more movement. And you'll notice that that movement causes the lap bar to slide forward, which is not how they're designed. Once they're locked in place, they do not move. They are hydraulic locking restraints in which they do not have individual ratchets where they lock. They just lock in whatever place that you set them down in. And they will continue to go down until they reach a spot where it's flush against your thighs and your belly area because it's designed to fit across the lower half of your tummy section and your thighs to help limit your upper body movement. And as an added safety measure, that's why they have the grab bar in the front for you to hold on to because if you're sitting in this position, your upper body a very limited range of motion. And with the seat sides, you have very limited side to side motion during those rough, or not rough, but intense direction changes with lateral forces. So my question still remains, 
if the writer was sitting in the correct position writing as designed how was it possible that his whole body was able to come forward enough to slam into that metal grate that has now fallen off on the front of my ride car but that's what you get when you have a very low budget and you don't have the actual vehicle in front of you to be able to use but these are the kinds of tests that need to be done to figure out how why and if it is even possible for somebody's body that is in decent enough physical condition to ride can that happen to them and that's kind of what i wanted to point out in this video I'm not trying to take away from the fact that it's a very tragic accident. Anytime somebody loses their life, it is not meant to be taken lightly. It is not something that should be looked at in any kind of way other than a tragic loss. It doesn't matter how they died. doesn't matter who they are. A loss is a loss. And I'm not trying to take away from that. I'm just trying to get to the facts and figure out exactly what happened. Now, I hope you kind of remember this seating arrangement because now I'm going to kind of show you on some pictures that I have from the coaster that I've got experience with from Mock Rides, M uh, Manta at SeaWorld San Diego, and why I believe the restraints, restraints did function as designed. And without directly pointing blame, the fault may lie within how the ride was experienced. I, like I said, very low budget. I'm just trying to get this out quickly because this is something as a former ride operator, especially, and as a enthusiast, I want to get a better understanding of. Now, if you look here, each restraint comes down over the lap across the midsection as I described with here's the metal and then the foam padding. This is what you're supposed to be grabbing onto during your ride and your arms are supposed to rest in here. And as I demonstrated, that really limits the range of motion that your body has. And then here's the curvature of the seat backs to also help minimize the amount of lateral side-to-side -side motion your body experiences throughout the course of your ride. And I know it's really hard to tell in this photo because it's at an awkward angle, but the seats are elevated, so it's kind of like a floorless ride experience. The, the floor even comes down a little bit from where the seat backs are bolted. And then here's that metal bar that's been referenced to as the cause of the blunt force trauma. Now, if it's not this type of bar that they're referring to that sits at the front of each coach, then I'm not sure what metal bar they're referring to because if you look closely, these curve outward and there's padding before your body even has a chance to touch them all over. There is no way somebody's head can physically come in contact with any part of this ride vehicle during the duration of their ride, unless they're riding in a way in which was not designed to ride. Like I said, putting your hands in the air, the ride and pretty much any ride is not designed for that behavior because it is a risky behavior, not just because your body can come in contact with parts of the ride vehicle unexpectedly, but because a lot of coasters have sections in which the train passes under other elements of the ride. Now ride manufacturers and designers do design them with clearance envelopes, which are a ma minimum amount of clearance required around the ride to prevent those types of injuries. But that doesn't negate the fact that it is still possible. On top of that, the forces can also cause weird things to happen with your body unexpectedly. Especially if you're riding in a gust of wind changes or things flying through the air like birds, things like that. And there's just all kinds of added risks when you're riding 
in a style in which the ride was not designed for you to ride in, which is why pretty much every ride, every coaster, every park that you go to, they will tell you to keep your arms, hands, legs, and feet inside of the vehicle. What they mean is do not put your arms up. Do not put your legs out. Do not stick your head out because the ride wasn't designed to be ridden in that manner. So I'm not trying to place blame on the victim because like I said, it is still a sad situation. But we can't ignore the fact that is it possible this person was riding in a manner in which they should not have been and that's what caused their injuries it is possible but it is also possible that that injury was caused by the ride but i want somebody to show me how find the evidence i want somebody to actually do the test that i did with the actual ride vehicle and see if it is possible if it is i will accept that if not then I hope everybody else will accept that too, because the facts are the facts. What happened happened, and we need to prevent things like this from happening again. But my my gut feeling is that this is a tried and true restraint seating system that's been in operation on coasters like this for the better part of a decade and a half without any significant incident until last week, and I'm still struggling to find out how and why. So if anybody else has more information, has more evidence that points either direction, please comment, share it with me. I will not be against seeing any hard facts, but like I just showed you right now, that's why I believe it's very, very, very unlikely that the writer was injured due to a design malfunction. I'm Cali Costa. Like comment, subscribe. I'll see you all next time. Deuces.